Why is it always Florida, folks? Why is it always Florida? Uh, welcome to the Tangent Podcast. Great to have everyone aboard today. I'm Vinny Politan. Al Wunsch is with us. Jonesy's with us. Uh, we all met or work together for the first time, really, on Court TV Radio. That's when we got the gang together. So this is sort of a reunion podcast of all of that. Uh, great to have everyone with us. We are live streaming on, of course, Facebook, um, YouTube, uh, Twitch, Twitter, X, and other places. But we're talking Twitch? about Florida. And where? Twitch. Yeah, Twitch. 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 We, it, I, I, we are now averaging, I think, uh, 1.2 viewers on Twitch. We're brand new there. A lot of young <laughs> kids, a lot of kids there. So um, we're in the middle of, of covering this huge case down in Florida involving a, a young girl, Madeline Soto, who was reported missing but was found five days later. Her um, mother's boyfriend's been arrested. They found all these horrific images of her on his phone. Mom gave some crazy story in the interviews that didn't match the evidence that they've gathered so far. So she's being investigated. Um, no one's been charged for her death, but he's been charged with all the uh, images on his phone of Madeline and what he was doing in those images uh, on the phone. But it has a lot of people talking like here we are again, the biggest case, the biggest true crime case in the country. And we're in Florida. I mean, there's 50 states. There's 50 states, Al, if I'm correct. You're the historian. But let, me do, are, let, me the do the let me do the math. Let me do the math. Carry the one. Yes, there are 50 states. 50 states, but we're always, I, I mean, it's amazing. Like, uh, I'm, I'm looking here. and you I know, have an answer. You have the answer. Why it's always I have Florida. the answer. Florida is the 49th worst state with income inequality. The 49th. What does that mean? Okay. It means you have so that the means that means that, the, that the, the high and the low? That there is a huge there the one percent is one percent, okay, and then there is ninety-nine percent that is poor. So okay. you either have the extremely rich or you have the extremely poor. So you have like you have a, a, a system that is very much, there was a song by the Dead Kennedys a number of years ago. It was called Kill the Poor. And then you take a look at Jean-Jacques Rousseau during the French Revolution, who said that when food runs out, the poor should eat the rich. So this is what we have. We have kill the poor versus eat the rich. And this is what we've got. It's like oh, a Fellini casting call. Well, a part of that would be that there's such a such desirable, um, very expensive uh, property in in Florida. So you know, people people with big money, like you know the Bee Gees, move move uh, Waterside, and uh, the Bee Gees you know, lived in Florida. Yeah, yeah, that's where they created the disco sound. Everyone thought it was disco, but it was really kind of like a Miami sound, you know, that wow. they were going with, like a rhythmic Miami wow. sound. Um, yeah, they all live there, uh, which was real, uh, way cool, actually. All three? I, I, but how about Andy? Did Andy Gibb live there as well, the youngest Well, probably. He, he would follow basically whatever the Bee Gees moves were, so I'm sure he did. He died young, though. He died very oh, young. Oh, yeah. He did. Indeed, he was going to be made a fourth member of the Bee Gees, official fourth member, and tour with them and everything just prior to his uh, tragic death, one of the great rock and roll deaths, uh, tragic deaths, I should say. I've got two answers for you on Florida. One is what you told me many years ago, Vinny, is, is that uh, the sunshine laws bring to light, uh, you know, uh, all of these cases that are going on in Florida, which means like the media has open access to the judicial uh, system. But that's not really the major cases. That's just like the wacko, like, you know, blurbs at the side of the news column. Uh, another reason is when I was in Key West, um, the locals said there's so many crazy characters there is because if you're running from something in life, it's as far as you can run. You know, you go to Florida and you run out of racing room. We had our first Key West a trial on court TV. Amazing. So it, it's it's not like the man who's being charged with the murder is representing himself. His wife is one of the co-founders of... Um, one of those fitness crazes. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, which one? Oh, my um, God. Um, oh, geez. Uh, the, the, I know exactly what you're talking about, Vin. Is it the Here's bike? the thing. I can remember stuff from the 70s and 80s and 90s, but I can't remember the specifics of this trial from a month ago. This is insane. <laughs> Why is that? Why is that? It's like, like, what is it, retro something? I mean, she was, she was like a retro fit. I mean, it was like one of those things that was like something a, fit. A, yeah. 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 Something fit. Millionaire. His wife's a millionaire and he's, he's representing himself and he's very kind. He came on my show a couple of times. Um, but he, like you said, Jonesy is a man who ended up down in Key West. He just, yeah. and he's a fascinating character, but. Um, accused of homicide, but um, he represented himself and the jury was hung first time around, so they're going to retry him. Well, a hung jury for a guy representing himself is a pretty damn good job. Oh, are you kidding me? Of course. I, yeah, I don't think we've true. ever seen successful self-representation in a, in, a, in, a, in a case um, of that magnitude. Now, Felix Unger did well, yes, um, but that was not that was not felony. That was not a felony. No, I just quote, I just quoted Felix Unger's trial uh, just yesterday in a, a last late last night in a text, which is you, uh, you should never assume because when you assume you make an ass out of you and me. Speaking well, of assume, Alec Baldwin basically assumed the gun was not loaded, and he yeah. says so. He actually says so. he's, he's on on video recorded saying I assumed it was it wasn't loaded, so. Um, I think prosecutors should play that up and then bring in Jonesy or Felix Unger as a as an expert witness in that case. I am available. Yeah. Okay. All right. What well, do you charge? And, and I and I agree with you, Jonesy, yeah. about the, the people. Um, you know, you, you go to Florida for a reason. There's always a reason. Yeah. Like you can go there to retire, right? You can go there to retire. You can go there um it, because there's beaches everywhere and beach folks, um, you know, a little more free spirited. And I think that leads to some of this. Some people um, sort of drift into Florida from other places because it's just easier living. It's easier living. Well, one set of clothes, one set of clothes. When I go to Florida, one of the things I notice, and you know, this sounds like a stereotype, but the driving, it just seems like the, the, the people, when they, they drive there, are just like reckless or just not paying attention. Um, and, you know, that's like this well, little, little little small piece of it, you know? Well, that's because some people are driving like this, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? And, you know, I mean, it, it. you take a look at the number of serial killers that are like – just there he goes, Jonesy. We're trying to have a little, uh, just a little bit of a lighthearted discussion on a Friday, and and Al's going right in for this. But that's okay. Go ahead. Florida is like here's one of them right here, Al. Here that, she that, is. That is exactly right. Okay, that's uh, the Wormus, right? That's Eileen like, Warnos. Yeah, Eileen Warnos. I mean, Mark. like you talk about a and 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 you know, male and female serial killers. So it's kind of nice that they, you know, they don't. Equal they opportunity. Don't equal opportunity offenders. I wonder if and the pay they, scale uh, is the same for female and male uh, serial killers in Florida. Well, what the, uh, what's her she, name? I don't know. Didn't doctor. do it for the money, though, did she? She would, she was, she would do it. She, what was her motivation? Like she would go after the, the, the Johns. And was it that she was um, kind of like acting out? Like, obviously, there, there were things wrong with her psychologically. Well, she, had a, she had a horrible childhood. Right. Um, so she was so, sort of taking family. that out on on all these Johns. Was that sort yeah. of the, the, the story there? Yeah, well, it, it, it was she was abused. And then, you know, these guys were abusing her. And that's what she did. She she lashed out on them. Um, you know, that. uh she said she had been raped and she wished that these scumbags, you know, felt the rape that she did. And that's why she killed them. But yeah, she was uh, uh, certainly an interesting individual, but I mean, you got hit her. I mean, you got the, you know, the, the Gary Ray Bowles. Um, and, you know, it's interesting that like, you know, Florida still has the death penalty and, yeah. and you see that they do, they do a pretty good job of executing 
um, people that have been, you know, sitting there for a while. Um, it, it's it's a it's a remarkable, just, I, I mean, like you could, I, you know, like let's face it, Florida is we have Florida to thank for America's most wanted. That's true. That's true. That's right. Adam Walsh's uh, son, you know, I mean that 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 was John Walsh's son Adam was was kidnapped, you know, was was uh, abducted, okay, murdered, and and it was from that that springboard uh, America's most wanted. And so I mean Florida Florida has a All right, Al, you've been shut down officially by True Crime Time. There are plenty of middle income people here. What in in Florida? Uh, look, I'm I'm I can tell you that the 49th, the, the 49th uh, ranking is, is you can look that up. I'm not making that up out of the, you know, off the top of my head. You know, Vinny, I do my research. Okay. I don't come in here. I mean, I know you two are both, you know, armchair, armchair generals with regards to your positions and stuff like that. I'm a foot soldier. I'm in the trenches. Okay, I'm in the muck in the mire and I'm doing the work I got to do to survive. And the 49th is not something I made up. That is proof. That is truth and proof. That now, wait a minute here. now, wait a minute here. I'm an armchair general and you have to scratch and, 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 and survive. What yes. are you talking about here? You live in that there Englewood, man. <laughs> so Englewood uh, we've got uh, a, uh, folks from all over watching this morning, including uh, Sweden. Sweden. Uh, now, Carrie has a question. Wonder how she never saw anything on his phone. Did he have it locked all those years? No, no, it's Al. It's Jacques Yves Cousteau. <laughs> what? what was that? <laughs> you, you mentioned Jacques Cousteau earlier in the show. No, I didn't. I didn't. What was the French name that you... Uh, oh, uh, Jean-Jacques Rousseau. <laughs> oh, we thought it was Jacques Cousteau. No, not Jacques, yes, Jacques Cousteau. Cousteau. Jacques Cousteau, Cousteau was making his, uh... comments about, about eat the rich. No, no Jacques was known for that. Jean, Jean Jacques Rousseau was a famous French philosopher during the French Revolution. Okay. Uh, which, I mean, you know, is. Is he the one uh, who said the peasants are revolting? No, no, that was, uh, <laughs> that was, uh, which we call it, um, County, no, County Monet. County Monet. Um, uh, Epstein, Florida. Juan Epstein. He's also a New Yorker, and he had his own island, but um, that's a good point. You know, I mean, you you take a look at, okay. Al, what was worse than Florida in the discrepancy? Cheryl wants to know. Do you remember from the list, which was number 50? I believe it's Alaska. Alaska. Uh, hmm. That makes sense. Hmm. But um, but Florida. Well, there are some good things that come out of Florida, like uh, uh, Kaylee. Okay. Kaylee is part of Florida. There she okay. is. Trailer parks. <laughs> well, those are everywhere too. But you, you know what's interesting? Um, if you're going to live, but if you're going to live in like a mobile home or something, um, wouldn't you rather be in a mobile home by the beach? Absolutely. And, there was a and, there was a trailer park in Florida, uh, in in South Florida, just above Fort Lauderdale, that uh, developers came in. It was on the uh, ocean, and they offered every person one million dollars for their trailer, uh, so that they could build on the property. And wow. uh, there was, a, there was uh, some holdouts, and uh, and everybody was complaining. The other residents, you know, thought one million dollars, but the thing is, okay, you get a million dollars minus like taxes and realtors and all that. You walk away with what six five fifty? Where are you going to go and live that kind of lifestyle? Right, a, a trailer on a beach like you know Rockford. Exactly. Um, me queen. Wait, may, may I just say here, the Florida Policy Institute is the one that ranked Florida forty ninth for worst income inequality in the United States. Who's who's five zero? Uh, you said Alaska. So it was I actually it was a Florida Institute that was doing it. But it's a yeah, Florida Florida Policy Institute for all of you doubters, okay, that think I just make this stuff up. I look it up. There's all Ted right? Bundy in court. Ted yeah. Bundy trial in Orlando. There's actual footage yeah. of that. Yep, video footage well, of it. It was one of the first trials. Really? Yes. Yeah, and that's the one. I believe 
was he representing? I think he was representing himself. He was representing himself. That's correct. Well, Ted and, Bundy relocated. And, I mean, and the he, judge, the judge actually complimented him for the way he handled the trial. Well, Jonesy, this this is this Ted Bundy fits right into your theory. Yes, true. He was he was getting away. He was committing all those crimes out in the the uh, Pacific Northwest. Right. And then was running from the law, ended up in, in Florida, Tallahassee, Orlando, Tampa. I think he was also down St. Petersburg. His so, biographer, his biographer, who also fell in love with him because he had a certain charm uh, about him and was a ha pretty handsome guy. Um, she, she speculated in, in the book that uh, he may have moved to Florida because he knew knew like it was death penalty land. It may have been like, oh, a, wow. You know, it may have been like, a, let's get this over with kind of thing. Let's get this done. Yeah. There's also, um, there's a, there's, if you're ever in Orlando, folks, there's, I think it's the, the city of Orlando has a little museum. And in the museum, they have pieces of the courtroom where he was tried, including the council table where he carved his name or initials into it. Wow. Yeah. So, you that's know, an odd, that's an odd thing to commemorate. I mean, it's it's kind of cool. I would go there maybe, but it's, it seems like odd to, you know, to I think it was part. Of, yeah, I think it was twofold. It was the, the historic courthouse, plus he was tried there. So they, the original stuff would have him in there. So they obviously they point it out when you go. Yorkshire, UK with us today. Um, yes. This is another one right here. We're looking at this woman, Al. Yes, um, the astronaut. This is, uh, and this one, yes, is Florida, but is also uh, connected to Texas. Texas. Well, that's 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 where NASA is between Texas and and Florida. I mean, uh, and even Arkansas. But I mean, tell us uh, the story. Linda, Linda Linda Baines Johnson made sure that Texas got a very very big uh, NASA, uh, you know, subsidy. But this is a woman that was in love. Uh, with a man who was married and an astro fellow astronaut, and she plotted to kill his paramour, and then she drove, um, I, she drove to te she drove from Texas to Florida, a wearing like a space outfit which has the ability to urinate in it, and it collects urine in inside a pouch in uh, attached to your leg. And so she was able to do that and, and keep on the road straight so that she would be able to get to uh, Florida and be able to eliminate her uh, boyfriend's paramour. Lisa Nowak, there she is. Here, here's the, 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 um, the love triangle. The, guess, guess, guess which one was the one wearing the space diaper? <laughs> <laughs> she looks guy, like Gary Newman. Gradually, she looks just like Gary Newman. Um, you just saw the other night. I just I was with Gary the other night. Now is this yeah. true? I put this up here, Al. You're the historian of the show. Um, do we believe she was the first arrested astronaut? Well, that she's certainly the first arrested on a felony, but. Astronauts had a very, very interesting reputation in and around Florida, okay, back in the days of the Gemini project, okay, and Mercury and things along those lines. They were quite the, uh, the demons, you know, that loved to party, loved to drive cars wow. very, very fast, uh, loved to, uh, you know, raise hell. So they certainly had but they also had carte blanche to be able to do a lot of this stuff. So I know that they have been talked to by the police, but she's certainly the first one arrested on a felony. That's so yeah, that would go on. A hard one to, that's a hard one to forget. I wanted to, they, um, you just showed a picture before, I think it was Gary Bowles, um, who had, uh, Gary Ray Bowles. Who, this one? No, no, that's not him before that. Um, now keep going. Well, well Bowles, just so you know, Bowles was uh, uh, murdered six gay men, um, and then he was executed not too long ago. But you know, what's, what's fascinating on these guys is the um, I always am fascinated on what your last meal is before you're executed. Oh, Bowles, Bowles last meal 
was three cheeseburgers, French fries, and bacon. That was his last meal. So here's the thing. I, I, I would not be able to eat if I knew that in three hours and 17 minutes I was going to be dead. Um, so I've often wondered about that last meal kind of thing. And a reporter that we know that witnessed a uh, an execution uh, on an assignment uh, once told me that it's kind of like the, the last FU at society because they're going to evacuate themselves. And um, her, th her theory was like, you know, eat up and uh, make a big splash in the end. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I don't know. You know, that that's an wow. interesting thought, but that's that's when they were using the electric chair. I don't think that's that same. Well, don't you evacuate yourself like when you die no matter what? I, I'm not sure. But, hence, know, the Rolling Stones, hence the Rolling Stones line and start me up in the very end of the song when he says you make a dead man come. Yes. Well, that, uh, I had to go there, huh, Vinny? <laughs> I I'm I I'm I tried to bleep it, but I couldn't. It's, well, it was, all right. So now Bobby Joe Long, okay, another wonderful individual from Florida. Um, his last meal was roast beef, bacon, French fries, and soda. So we're seeing that bacon and French fries are sort of a a big thing. How can you have roast beef without America. going for the mashed potatoes instead of the French fries? I mean, mashed I, potatoes I, and roast beef go together. I would, I would recommend. I would like suggest. I'd like to have as my last meal, like, um, you know, like beef bourguignon from a restaurant outside of Paris. So it would take a long time for them to go to Paris. <laughs> All right, here's the question: the food. Why do people think Ted Bundy was good looking? He always looked deranged to me. Well, because um, you look at the other serial killers and you go, well, you know what? I mean, it's like saying that there's certain female comedians that are attractive and they say they're attractive for comedians. So he's attractive for a serial killer. Well, um, well he, was, he was also very uh, charming. He, uh, he was being groomed for politics, if I'm not mistaken. He was a member right. of the Republican Party and he was being groomed for a future in politics. Right. And, That's uh, correct. Even even his biographer, you know, fell in love with him. So he had a certain something about him. So a lot of these folks down in Florida are searching for their lost shaker of salt, pretty much. Would you agree, Jonesy? <laughs> pretty much. Uh, well, modern generations know what Jimmy Buffett meant when he says, I stepped on a pop top. No. A pop, what is top that? Being, a pop top is from a can of soda. Or beer. Soda. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And it would lie I, thought he, I thought he said he stepped on a pop rock. No, no. No, no, no. He would get his foot. Remember Pop Rocks? Oh, yeah. Out, they my, they go, my daughter thought it was stepped on a Pop Tart. <laughs> I was like, what, what, what makes sense? There's no sense to that. And, well, and she, she had no what idea what a Pop Tart is. When Paul That's Simon right. sings Kodachrome, do people know what that is? Oh, I certainly. And, and Isn't that the a thing? Phenomenal you, song. Is that the thing you look through like that? Yeah, it, 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 it captures moments in time. Gotcha. Do you guys so, remember? So wait. Guys, so now we're going on. Uh, you know, once again, because I'm so fascinated by these last meals. Uh, so. <laughs> you can tell it's a lunchtime uh, podcast. It, it, well, that's what I figure. People are getting ready to eat lunch, and so okay. you're going to say to yourself, "Let me take a look at, at at somebody who this was what they got to eat at the last well, as their last meal." Let okay. me ask so you this Apple though, Ray Bolin Jr. I'm sorry. Let me ask you this though: When you have your last meal in Florida, is it at four p.m.? Is it like the the, the blue plate yeah, special? The early bird like special. Early bird? No, it's a very early bird special because they generally get you right before like dawn. I mean, you know, they're always pretty good, pretty good about uh, getting you up. And like, there's a great line in the movie Love and Death, Woody Allen, and um, they said it, that his attorney. I, I had a very good attorney. I, I they, they were going to execute me at six. He was able to get it to seven. <laughs> so, you know. But um, the his fa the, okay, so um, Oscar Ray Bolin, oh, Oscar Ray Bolin, his last meal, okay, was dun dun dun, dun a ribeye steak, a baked potato, salad. So he had a garlic bread. Okay, so all the food groups are represented: lemon meringue and Coca Cola. Hmm. 
I'm always fascinated by the, um, and I would probably do it myself, the, the folks who choose the Diet Coke. <laughs> <laughs> no Coke, Pepsi. Uh, it's not because, you know, I'm diabetic, so I, I might do it out of habit. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Well, that's just like what's record. You know, I mean, the guy had dessert. He's the first one that had dessert. Oh, Raymond Weiss did not expect to be talking about Rousseau here. Is he Jacques Rousseau? Really? Ah, see, you, you never know what's going to uh, come up. Yeah, that's why we're called the tangent. Okay. Yes. Jeez. Do you guys remember uh, Seymour Shuss? Seymour Shuss. Yes. Uh, I, I, remember, I remember Seymour Butts. <laughs> well, Seymour <laughs> Shuss was, uh, I guess, a New York City retiree, uh, you know, uh, 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 around 70. Horrible case. And in 2002, he was online to see a movie. Let's see, the movie was called Never Again. Uh, of course, it, uh, uh, it was a romantic comedy. What else? And uh, the guy in front of him named Irving Rosenberg was fumbling with his cash to uh, pay for the movie when Seymour's wife got uh, annoyed and said to him, hurry up, and uh, hassled the guy. And uh, he spun around and told the, uh, Seymour Shuss's wife to shut up. Now, Seymour uh, laid into him, punched him out. Uh, he died like, you know, 16 days later. Uh, he had an interesting defense. He claimed he was blind and, um, you know, uh, just felt somebody grab him. And that the, the, his wife, uh, he felt his wife was threatened. And Dr. Baden, our old fr friend, uh, said that uh, um, the fellow actually died from an aneurysm that wasn't caused by the uh, by the punch. So in the first trial, he got uh, he uh, got off. Uh, it was a hung jury, uh, and then eventually he uh, settled and did a six month sentence. But the man claimed he was blind, yet he was online and to see. We had movie. video of him walking in and out of the courtroom like he couldn't see. Yes, <laughs> like the old mobsters when they show up with the. Hearing uh, devices and the well, two and things, two things about Seymour Shuss that came out during the trial. One, like they were going to the movies, and I understand blind people can go to the movies, right? Especially if you have a spouse. But it was, you know, it was like okay, because people were questioning whether he actually couldn't see what right. was happening, right? That he right. punched him. So he was going to a movie. Plus, he was an avid golfer. Okay, <laughs> right. Wow. You can see the golf ball. But there, there are blind golfers too, and we. Well, also, like, aren't, there, aren't there also bleeping golf balls like uh, same same yeah, in tennis? Yeah, there's a ball yeah. Ball. There's golfers that can see that suck. Like yeah, this. there you go. Uh, I mean, um, well, maybe the movie was in Braille, Vinny. Yeah. Well, it was really a case though. It was kind of like the grumpy old men. Yeah. Like, and you talk about why would it be in Florida? Well, this is where you go to retire. And it was a die. bunch of northeasterners. They go down to Florida. They're going to the early movie. They're fumbling around. They're not patient. They're a little grouchy, and they get into an argument at a at a at a movie theater, and a, and a poor guy dies, uh, Irving, because when he got punched, he fell backwards and, and hit his head. But it's the old but for but for getting punched, he's he's you know he's not going to hit his head. Well, I also thought things. it was interesting that the that the wife is the one who kind of started it verbally. Yes, isn't that always the way? And I don't know about you guys, but did you gentlemen when you were dating? Um, did you ever have like the type of girl who would like start, start with somebody like, and then you as the man are stuck in a situation where you might have to finish it, you know, just by like hassling people or speaking out of turn, uh, to, a to, a another guy. And the guy's not going to like fight her. The guy's going to fight, uh, you that happened to me all the time. I don't know if, if it ever did to you. Well, it, it certainly, uh, it happened to me because of friends of mine's girlfriends. And since I was the football player, they would always, you know, she would make some comment about some guy or some girl from South Philly, which, because if you're down the Jersey shore, that's where you see a lot of people from Philadelphia. And then there would always be a fight and I would be thrown into the front to get, <laughs> to get into the action. And then I'd get the crap kicked out of me by like four guys from Philadelphia, three girls from Philadelphia, and then the bouncer. So it was always a fun situation for me, but I, I, I never had that situation. But but Vinny, we had we we covered a case where the the old man you know got popcorn thrown at him, oh. and then he shot the guy in the theater, and he's found not guilty. And found not guilty, and was and at his wedding two days later. 
I mean, that's yes. that case, like that his case daughter's really wedding was planned right the weekend, like at the trial, right at the end of the trial. He's found not guilty on Friday. It, 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 so in a movie theater, there's a, a, a young couple, sort of younger couple, um, is sitting in one row. And then the row behind him is this retired um, police officer and his wife. And Two annoying human beings. And it's not, and the, the movie hasn't started yet. The couple had their child at home and they were checking in with the babysitter and he was sort of texting or talk, whatever it was, he was using his phone and the movie hadn't started yet. And I don't even know if the, if the, um, the cartoons or the previews were playing. Previews had not played yet. So they get into an argument about using the phone. And then the, the, the man who ends up getting shot turns to face the, uh, the the older man the the police officer the, the retired police officer who's sitting in his chair and i think the man who gets shot throws his popcorn and at that moment he pulls out his weapon and fires it instantly like that and he's found not guilty yeah. did he throw one piece of popcorn or did he throw his entire the whole bucket well i got uh, no was it no it was a handful it was a handful, a handful of popcorn. Okay? Yeah, yeah. It was a handful of popcorn. And, and and then I got in trouble on court TV when I said it was, you know, were there condiments on the popcorn? And Vinny said, yes. I said, so it was a salt and buttery. And, um, you know, that was the, the defense on that assault and buttery. I love and, how you got in trouble for saying it and you, and you say it again. <laughs> well, I, I, well, I, you know, I'm, I'm I a, love different, a different, a uh, different, yes. You know, media source but um so the the thing that blew my mind on that case was first of all this old man shows up was it okay casey yes 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 he was from florida i was of just course. answering the question i was just answering the question that's, that's all so this this old man shows up to like a matinee theater okay with his wife they take five seats OK, because the son's supposed to meet them there. So they put jackets down in the middle of the aisle. So this way here, they have they rock up five or six seats for three people. OK, and then the guy is looking at his phone because it was the first time they were able to leave the baby with a babysitter. So they were just making sure that everything was OK. The guy goes, put your phone away. And he says, listen, I'm, you know, I'm just trying to look at this, you know, contact my babysitter and everything else. He goes, put it away. And he goes, listen, dude, I'm just trying to, you know, get this thing. The guy gets up and goes and reports it to the manager and says to the manager that this man is using his phone and I want him thrown out. And the manager's like, well, the movie hasn't even started yet, everything else. So then the guy comes back in. He's pissed off. And so then he goes to the guy. He looks at him. He goes, I just spoke to the manager. You're going to get thrown out of this movie theater. And then that's when the guy stood up and like, what's your problem? He goes, I have a problem with you. And he was sitting there and he was eating. And they, they didn't even buy the popcorn. They brought their own popcorn into the theater. <laughs> okay. And their own candy. All right. So this is just a nightmare and a half. They probably paid 20 cents to get in a senior citizen discount rate for a, a, a matinee. And so the guy reaches over, grabs a couple pieces of popcorn from his from his bag and throws it at him. And then the guy gets up, takes his weapon out and fires. Not only hits him, but also hits the wife who put her hand up. Yep. OK. And it went through her hand and kills this man. And then he's found not guilty. Yeah. This is the absolute travesty of a lifetime. And I mean, I defend cops and my majority of my practice is police officers. And I'm always on, on the side of cops. But in this instance, this man had no right to kill somebody yeah, for getting yeah. hit with a couple of uh, kernels yeah, yeah. of popcorn. Um, okay. So here's the question, Jonesy. Rambling yes. uh, Rome. Is this a sarcastic comment? Or do you think she's literally, is it like, oh, interesting? Or is it like, oh, interesting? It depends on what, what when she uh, wrote it. What we, what we I were think saying it was when time. Al was talking, but I'm not sure. Well, then it must be it must be that she thinks it's interesting. That, thank you, Jones. I appreciate that. <laughs> He's a very interesting my, individual. I do my, my research. Now, now, Vinny, you and I had a little argument on something, but um, 
because you know we do our prep for the show. And uh, I said to you that Joe Exotic was arrested in Florida, and you said he was not. And I, no, I, I said him. his trial. His trial, but he it's was not, arrested. It's not a in Florida, Florida case. Joe was Exotic arrested. is not a Florida case. And he went to Florida to get the hitman. It's not. Jo, the, Tiger King is not a. It, it, you want it to be. She's from Florida. But the, he Florida. went to Florida to get the hitman, and that's when he got arrested. All right. So, I mean, there is a Florida get, tie there. And, and he went to Florida to get a hitman. Okay. So that but his trial was in Oklahoma. All right. I'm not arguing on the trial. I said arrested. Okay. <laughs> okay. Talk about grumpy old men. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> If we were in the same room, one of you guys would take the other out. Well, all right. Stop being mean to me. You're both picking on me. But, um, <laughs> you know, we, we take a look at the the number of serial killers from Florida. I mean, it's just – it's There's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot. And there's, there's a lot also, in the, north, in the Northwest, so too. The Northwest kind of has that. The Pacific Northwest has, has a bunch, too. By the way, I want to answer this question from uh, a Big Girl for Life. Um, Sicko Stearns was yeah. There is a picture of him working at Disney. So in the in the in the hot case now in Florida, uh, the accused, um, the, this the main suspect in Madeline Soto's uh, death, and the um, he's already held on all the stuff that's found on his phone, all the images. Um, he was working at Disney, and it, it wasn't clear if he was a Disney employee or a subcontractor of Disney. But there's a there's a, a video online of him working at Disney. It's his face. He's got like a little uniform on or the name tag. And uh, that is true. And unfortunately, um, do you think Disney, this is interesting. Do you think Disney itself brings some of these crazy, has an, has an impact on, on Florida having all these stories? Do you think there's any Disney factor in that? Or is that just... Just, I'm not. Just I'm not nothing. sure about that, but I. But but Disney's like its own country there. Sometimes I mean I remember a case that we covered where somebody uh, was killed in the parking lot, and the Disney officials came in and hosed down the blood before the police um, could investigate the scene because they yeah. they wanted to protect their image. Um, another another thing is it's it's not just these major crimes in Florida, as Vinny you point out every night on Tank Takes on your court TV show and Al chimes in on Mondays when you guest on tank on uh, Vinny's show. Um, it's those little weird stories also like the crazy little crimes. And um, you know, that's I mean, the classic Florida man, right? The classic Florida man story. It's a, yeah. yeah it's, it's the heat. Yeah. It's how the about, heat. How about so the, have you guys ever played season. the Florida man game? Have you ever played the Florida man game, Jonesy? No, I don't know how to do that. Um, here, this, let me put you in here. So, all right. So this is what you, you need to do. You, you take your birthday. Which, what's your birthday, uh, Jonesy? Uh, month, November 4th, 1961. Oh, no, you don't think of it's year. November 4th, November. I was uh, born in Newark. My mother's maiden name. <laughs> don't give away, this <laughs> give away all your password information. Yeah, okay. You know, which by the way, anyone who watched, um, me on Monday night on Vinny's show, uh, Darnell put up his, uh, TJ Maxx card. And he put it in front of the camera. So please go back, buy whatever you want on his TJ Maxx card. Okay? okay. Please do that. So the, the Florida man, that's great. The Florida man game is you put in your the, the, your birthday, right? So November 4th, and then the words Florida man. And then you Google it, and then you look at the headlines. And whoever you're with, you compare who's got the best headline. Oh, so cool. Jonesy's is... Florida man accused of driving around naked with electronic device attached to what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dad. <laughs> what's, what's your, what's your um, uh, birthday date, uh, Al? March 27th. All right, March. Oh, wait, your birthday's coming up. Yes, it's coming up March, next week. All right, let's, let's see what your headline is going to be. It's a fun game you can play at home, folks. <laughs> That would be next Wednesday as uh, Big Al's birthday. As the crow flies. Police. Yeah. Florida man hit mother, stuffed dumplings in her mouth for refusing to dress his mannequin. <laughs> I think we've all been there. Okay. 
I think we've all been there at least once in our lives. Okay, so electronic device attached to what? Um, dumplings for refusing to dress the mannequin. Well, Vinny, right, I will do mine now. Put your head down, yeah. Uh, February 4th. All right, February 4th. <laughs> Is this a specific site that does this just with no, Florida headlines? No, Google. You just have to do it on Google. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, amazing stuff. Right, wait, low 12, thank you very much for the birthday. Here we go. Florida man attacked sister bit cop after someone touched his cigar. Police Ooh. say. Okay. You never touch I a man's Al cigar. Wins. I think Al with the dumplings wins. That's like blowing yes. on another man's dice. Yes, yes, yes. The, the, so, the apple dumpling gang uh, situation. So you a, know, that happens, Vin. You get a little pissed off at your mom. She's not going to dress your mannequin. So you shove some dumplings in her mouth, okay? Who hasn't? Who hasn't? Who was that lady that just flashed on the screen? That was uh, my mom on there with the uh, and this. This is uh, Madeline Soto. This is the big case that's happening right now. It's her 13th yeah. oh, birthday right. photo. This is the day before. Uh, that's her what birthday? Thirteenth. That's her thirteenth. Yeah, and she he, wow. she is uh, a victim of a, a victim of abuse. Um, that they found on his phone since she was eight. So for five years. Wow. Living, this monster that her uh, mother brought into their lives or, you know, finagled his way into their lives, depending upon the, the facts here. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. I thought, John, like, was Dahmer, did Dahmer have any connection to Florida at any point? No. I don't think Dahmer had any connection to Florida. That's did he ever? Did he move to Florida on his own and then come back home at some point? I don't. I don't I'm remember sure. him having any connection. I may be wrong, but I don't remember in anything I've read on him with a connection to Florida. But um, that doesn't mean there isn't something there. But you know, you also you got a lot of colleges, and you know, you got a guy like the uh, Gainesville Ripper. Okay. Yeah. Um, and. You know that you've got Sunny Isles Beach. I'm Jeffrey sorry, Dahmer spent time in Sunny Isles Beach. Oh, really? Wow. It wasn't the Gainesville. Uh, uh, it, was he the guy who set up the he beheaded the victims and set them up so that in, they would in be weird in position? Yeah, so that when yeah. the police entered, they would have like this macabre, uh, you know, these headless bodies and uh, heads staring at them on mantelpieces. Yeah, sort of like the the Ed Gaines of Florida. Red Gein or whatever. Florida. All right. Uh, Al is too much, says Jessica. Too much. Well, thank you, Jessica. I do appreciate that. I would take that as a compliment. And I, the, I jury, am. the jury is still voting on uh, Ted Bundy, not handsome. Ted yeah. Bundy. I, but like you said, like so let's put up, let's show some of the other uh, serial killers. And well, there's Bundy. You know what's interesting? He's on trial in Florida, but do you see what he's wearing? He's yeah, wearing I, I saw that. Seattle, Seattle Mariners. Uh, Shirt under his yeah, jacket. weird, huh? And, it, and and with a sport coat, it doesn't go. Yeah, yeah, crazy. Not handsome at all. That's interesting. Oh, it reminds me of the dad on Full House. What? Huh? Oh, huh? No. Is this so, like the dad on Full House. As far as uh, my saying, he was handsome. Um, I once asked uh, a group of women um, who was uh, uh, who was you know the the, the 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 guy that they liked the most in the clash was it Mick Jones or Joe Strummer and every woman in the room said Paul Simonon. Paul, which, Paul Simonon was was considered the best looking of that entire group. In fact, you saw any any of the women performers um, that uh, they were all after him, all after him. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, didn't see it coming. He was also a very, very nice guy, by the way. But I mean, so maybe like, I'm not a great one, judge. He was the one that, um, you know, you name any of those female performers that were doing the, the punk rock stuff at the time, everyone loved him. Mm -hmm. But but you know what? The interesting thing about Florida, I, and and I, I bring this up because it it blew my mind that that there was a game between Notre Dame and Miami. The fight in Irish, right? The fight, the fight in Irish, and there, the um, Notre Dame was selling T-shirts, and the T-shirts said, "It's the Catholics versus the convicts." <laughs> <laughs> 
because they were able to show that on the the Miami football team, like yeah. of of the starting twenty two, like twenty had criminal records. So they ended up. This game was in nineteen eighty eight, if I'm not mistaken. That it was the Catholics versus the convicts, and it was hilarious. They ended up doing a documentary about it, and and you see how people were so upset that you know the Catholic school would do this. And um, who was the guy that uh, was uh, used to be the host of uh, the, the Sunday morning? Um, Charles Curl. No, 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 no. Charles Curl. No. Um, it, it, he was. He Lawrence went to Miami. Olivier, the guy that does the Polaroid uh, commercials. Oh, he's good. He's good. He's good. Oh, he's. And good. I've started drinking tea, Vinny. It's much more refined. Ah, uh, uh, she'll have some tea with her lemon, and I'll have a cheeseburger and some coffee. But the, <laughs> the you know, so like. Even that in a college football game, you know, Florida gets a bad, bad rap. Catholics versus the convicts. And and if you have an original one of those t-shirts, it's worth a lot of money, trust me. But it is remarkable that it, you know, even in the collegiate era, you're looking at this situation and saying, Florida, crazy. Crazy. I mean, you know, there were people that say that's because Florida is technically the penis of the United States. Oh, that maybe that's what well, that's oh. not, that's a, that's an anatomy term, Vin. OK, oh. I wasn't making dead men. You know what? What uh, Jonesy said. Let me tell you, I, I, I will um, at some point be moving full time to Florida. Just just so I want people from Florida to know this is not a Florida bashing uh, podcast, but it just so happens there is a an inordinate uh, high percentage of these stories, cases, and trials that come from the Sunshine State. But I, I'm going to move there. I Think mean, of all the material you'll have. Like, no, there's no doubt. Basis. Just so, like so regular Dahmer life. worked in a deli. Could you imagine that? Dahmer worked in a deli? Down in Miami Beach. I have a quarter pound of liverwurst, please. That, he worked in a deli? Well, you know, if you're going to learn how to slice and dice, that's the best place <laughs> to go. He slices, dices, and makes great Julian fries. Anna Sweden from Sweden. We got a lot from Sweden. We got to like that. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, you know, was, you, um, when, when we do when we do these podcasts, when I've been going live, especially uh, with the YouTube audience, um, a lot of folks, because of the time of day, because, you know, there's the, the, the time difference, uh, we get a, a big number of viewers that are coming from Sweden, the UK, and other places in Europe, which is uh, nice to see. Thank you so much, Anna Sweden. Okay, the person I was thinking of was from Meet the Press, Chuck Todd. Oh, to Chuck Miami. Todd. Yeah, yeah, Chuck Todd. You should, you should have said the guy with the red hair. That Chuck Todd went to Miami and was in this school at that time and was incensed that they would be that the Catholic school would allow them to put the to you know have those t-shirts printed and then they all wore them to the game. What so, Catholics can't know. have a sense of humor? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I mean that we record. I mean, I, I gotta tell you, I thought that was hilarious and yeah. it was a genius, ingenious um slogan. It really was. Now I don't necessarily agree with it. I think it's a you know not a nice thing. Look to at do. this. All of a sudden, Al's got all these defenders. He's got a whole family defending him right now. Cool. God bless you. Bless you, everyone. Simple. Dolores <laughs> and company. The who? Dolores and and her family. What well, you know, coming. Dolores? I I I have a deep affection for you and your family. Okay, because I I'm I'm getting abused like there's no tomorrow. I'm like the the uh, redheaded bastard stepchild. That's me. I, That's I me. can't even figure out like what what we did to pick on Al. <laughs> I, well, I mean, first of all, uh, the Jacques Cousteau versus Jean Jacques Rousseau. Well, that wasn't us. That was a, a commenter. Well, but it's still being picked on. Okay. <laughs> Why but is I, everybody always picking on me? <laughs> exactly. You know, Charlie Brown. Very, very sad that they come. And then along came Jones. <laughs> but um, 
you know, so like if we take a look and like, don't get me wrong. Okay. I mean, I've had a lot of fun in Florida and stuff. I didn't get a chance to ever do a spring break because I played baseball in college and baseball season is unfortunately the spring. We would go to um, Hilton Head and we would train there. So I never got a chance to go down to spring break in Florida. I, I've i seen videos, I've seen movies, I've seen everything else. It looks like a heck of a lot of fun. Now, Vin, did you ever venture to No, well, I went to school in California, so the folks from my school would go to spring break. They would go to Mazalan down uh, in uh, – Jonesy? That, that's in the uh, the country known as Mexico. Mexico. Um, but here, here I have a spring – a, a spring oh, wait, break. Patty Franklin, thank you for the birthday wishes. Appreciate yeah. that. Um, MTV, spring break. They When spring break got kicked out of South Florida, um, they sort of moved it and got invited to Panama City Beach, which is in the, in the, in the panhandle. And that's, that's where we have a place. That's where we go to the beach. Um, but I think what the folks at MTV, who are probably from New York, didn't realize is that, you know, in March and early April, it's not complete. It cannot... It's not always beach weather or even close to beach weather. Like you can have cold snaps. It's not till May that things really, you want to be on the beach and the water gets really warm. So they had the first MTV spring break in Daytona Beach. And it was like, you know, in the 30s and 40s. And they still made all the kids go out there with their bikinis and their little um, swimsuits and their trunks and did the show and pretended like it wasn't like, 35 degrees and windy, cold, and raining. It was brutal. That's brutal. called acting. Was. That's called acting. And by yeah. the way, Debbie, Debbie Higney, very, very nice. Thank you. She loves my Monday night think tanks, where I am the only one who actually participates in think tanks. If you watch, the other two say nothing. Okay? It's me. I'm forced to carry the entire show, and I do. Well, Robin, I think, is playing the Florida man game. Florida man flashes buttocks at IHOP. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when that happens. You like pancakes? It doesn't matter if you like pancakes. The sunny side is up. But, you know, where I the mean, boys like, are. I've never been to a uh, uh, spring break, uh, but I've seen where the boys are, and it doesn't work out too well on that one. Um, I've been uh, to Fort Lauderdale numerous times around that time of year. The hotel that I would stay at refused to to rent to anybody under the age of uh, 26 uh, during that week. Interesting. That we we do we rent out our home, and um, it's spring break. We don't even allow it to be rented. Sure, um, but if we have to know the people, we have to know because yeah. it's in, it's insane. And you know what happens now with spring break? It's like high schoolers. And what they do is, here's the trick. Two moms and 15 kids will rent, will rent a house. And the, and the moms just feed them and, you know, wash the towels and drink wine. And the kids just do whatever they want all over the place. Wow. And, and that's what's happening with spring break. It's, it's less college in Florida. It's more high school kids now. But it's, but it's the parents. Like, you know, two moms will rent the house because you have to be a certain age. And then they will kind of be like the den moms for the week. And if one of them, if they have two sons, then it's 15 boys. If they have two girls, then it's like 15 girls in the house. It's insanity. So that's why you don't don't even rent to anybody because you can't you can't prevent. That no, we have to know. Them. We have to know them because, um, yeah. you know, and they'll come up with a way to kind of trick everybody. Jonesy wins. What do I win? From, the, from I the Florida Man game. Oh, really? Oh, the headline? Yeah, I, I I thought Al's well <laughs> attached to what? <laughs> that is yeah, that is and, good, and especially just, in that era, nineteen sixty one. Just so you folks know, uh, Jonesy and I have both asked to be able to use Vinny's place in Florida, and he's required us to get references, which is very very sad, <laughs> very sad. Yeah, and I'm, seven references, not even two. I mean, you know, where am I going to get seven from? Yes. But uh, yeah. you know what? I, it is the. 
I, I have to think it's the heat has got to be something to do with this. You you know that's that's quite possible. I mean, recently, um, uh, True Detective had another season with Jodie Foster, and it took place in Alaska where there's no light. Right. Don't Since tell me what happened. Spoiler alert! I started watching it. Yeah, well, no, uh, I, there's no. I'll, 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 I'll save you the trouble. It sucked. Oh, it was very oh. good. It was good. I it it sucked. Great. Okay, it's not worth the time. By the time you get to the end of it, you will just go like this: look for something sharp and end it all. I think it was, it was that great. Annoying. Did, did you gentlemen watch the uh, uh, the recent Fargo TV show? No, the Coen no. Brothers. Oh, fantastic! I mean, once, you once definitely again, watch. You know, all I have those. Good soldier. I'm out. I'm in the, the muck in the mire. I'm not be able. To, I'm not in that big lounge chair you're in watching TV. You need a little distraction in life, okay. and these these serialized I mean, dramas are my distraction. Well, gentlemen, it's about that time. What? Um, big thank you to everyone who was uh, watching today and supporting uh, the live uh, broadcast here, uh, because we're going to end the live broadcast. And and I'll tell you why. Do you want me to tell you why? I, I why? have to it a little a little earlier than I would want to. Pickleball. Um, I, no, I have to do an interview with uh, NPR. Oh, nice. Ah. So I'm going to have to learn how to talk like this. Yes. Very exciting. Uh, what, yes. What, what, what topic are you going to be we, handling we, for NPR? here on uh, NPR. And, uh, and you no, have to answer. Scott Peterson. Scott Peterson case. You have oh. to answer all the questions by starting with the word so. So. <laughs> yeah, and you have to, you have to talk no. in a sing-song voice. So Scott Peterson. Is, if uh, you end up in heaven and you face your creator, what word do you want him to say? Jonesy. That's, you know, you got to have that uh, wish record, the uh, actor's circle questions. There you go. Well, that's it um, for this episode. We'll do this every, look, I think we're going to do this pretty regularly on Fridays when everybody's around because we got to yeah. go three schedules and three time things. And it's, I think it's perfect for a Friday because we can, we can pull back from all of the um, death and despair and, and on Fridays, take some time to go off on a tangent. Amen. When, and now, uh, which book? See you guys Monday night, uh, 9 to 10 on Vinny's show. Okay, on Court TV, and uh, you get me on legal at Legal Weapon Three and Albert at Legal Weapon Three dot com. And Jonesy, where can we find you? Well, I'm up and down the dial. The best way to find my schedule uh, and air times is GlennJones dot net. Glenn is with one N, as Mommy intended it to be. And thank you for the birthday wishes, Anne, and the rest of the wonderful people that have said happy birthday to me. We'll see you on Friday, and I'll tell you what the nice presents that Jonesy and Vinny. <laughs> I'm getting okay. you the same thing. Like my father used to say, I'll get you the same thing I got you last year. <laughs> exactly. Say goodbye, Jonesy. Goodbye, Jonesy. <laughs>